Composition with the king of Hungary, <laughs> well, then all the dukes fall upon the king. <laughs> Heaven, grant us your peace, but not the king of Hungary's. <laughs> oh, amen. <laughs> well, it concludes like the sanctimonious pirate that set to sea with the Ten Commandments, yet scraped one from the table. Thou shalt not steal. Aye. <laughs> Daddy raised. Well, it was a commandment to command the captain and all the rest from their functions. They put forth the steel. There's not a soldier of us all that in the Thanksgiving before meet do relish the petition well that prays for peace. Uh, I never heard any soldier dislike it. I believe you, for that ever was where grace was said. No. A dozen times, at least. <laughs> what, in meter? In any proportion, or in any language. I yes. think, or in any religion. <laughs> and why not? Grace is grace, despite of all controversy. As, for example, thou thyself art a wicked villain, despite of all grace. Well, there went but a pair of shears between us. Ooh, oh, I grant, as there may, twixt the list and the velvet. Thou art the list. And thou the velvet? <laughs> thou art good velvet. Oh. Thou art a three-piled piece, I warrant thee. I'd as lief be a list of English cursy as be piled as thou art piled for a French velvet. Do I speak feelingly now? Huh? Uh, thou dost indeed, and with great feeling of thy speech. I will, out of thine own confession, learn to begin thy help. Yet, whilst I live, forget to drink after thee. I think I have done myself wrong, have I not? Yes, that thou hast, whether thou art tainted or free. <laughs> oh. Aye, aye, aye. Behold, behold where Madam Mitigation comes. Mm. I have purchased as many diseases under her roof as come to... Do okay. what I pray, I judge. To three thousand dollars a year. Aye, and more. <laughs> a French crown more. Oh. Thou art always figuring diseases in me, but thou art full of air, for I am sound. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, not as one would say healthy. Thou art sound as things that are hollow. Oh. Thy bones are hollow. Impiety has made a feast of thee. <laughs> How now? Which one of your hips oh, oh, has oh, the most oh, profound oh. sciatica? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> There's one yonder arrested and carried to prison was worth five thousand of you all. Who's that, I pray thee? Mary, sir, that's Claudio. Signor Claudio. Claudio de prison? Tis not so. Nay, but I know tis so. I saw him arrested, saw him carried away, and which is more, within three days he's had to be chopped off. But after all this fooling, I would not have this so. Art thou sure of this? I am too sure of it. And it is forgetting Madame Julietta with child. Believe me, this may be true. He promised to meet me not two hours since, and he was ever precise in his promise keeping. Besides, you know, draw something near to the speech we had to such purpose. But much more agreeing with the proclamation. Uh, away, let us learn the truth of it. <sighs> what with the war, what with the sweat? What with the gallows and what with poverty? I am custom shrunk. How now? What's the news with you? Yonder man is carried to prison. Well, what has he done? A woman. But what's his offense? <laughs> Groping for trouts in a peculiar river. What? Is there a maid with child by him? No, but there's a woman with maid by him. You've not heard of the proclamation, have you? What proclamation, Matt? All the houses in the suburbs of Vienna are to be plucked down. And what shall become of those in the city? Oh, they're to stand for seed. They'd have gone down too, but for a wise burger put in for them. But shall all our houses of resort in the suburbs be pulled down? All to the ground, mistress. Oh, why, there's a change indeed in the Commonwealth. What shall become of me? Oh, come, fear not you. Good counselors never lack for clients. <laughs> Though you change your place, you need not change your trade. I'll be your tapster still. Come, pity will be taken on you. You that have cried your eyes out almost in the service. 
you will be considered. What's to do here, Thomas Tadster? Let's withdraw. <laughs> ah, here it comes, Signor Claudio, led by the provost to prison. Claudio! Giulietta! authority make us pay down for our offense by weight. The words of heaven, on whom it will, it will, on whom it will not so, and still tis just. What? Why, how now? Come on! How now, Claudio? Whence comes this restraint? From too much liberty, my Lucio. Liberty, as surfeit is the father of much fast. So every scope by the immoderate use turns to restraint. Our natures do pursue like rats that raven down their proper bane, a thirst to evil, and when we drink, we die. If I could speak so well under an arrest, I'd send for certain of my creditors. Yet I'd as lief have the foppery of freedom as the wisdom of restraint. What's that offense, Claudio? <laughs> what but to speak of would offend again. What, is it murder? No. Lechery, then. Call it so. Away, sir, you must go. One word, good friend. A Lucio, a word with you. A hundred, if they'll do you any good. Is lechery so looked after? Thus stands it with me. Upon a true contract, I got possession of Julietta's bed. You know the lady, she is fast my wife. We'll save that we do the denunciation lack of outward order. This we came not to only for propagation of a dower remaining in the coffers of her friends from who we thought it meet to hide our love till time had made them for us. But it chances the stealth of our most mutual entertainment with character too gross is writ on Juliet. <laughs> with child, perhaps. Unhappily, even so. Uh, and this new deputy, now for the Duke, uh, whether it be the fault and glimpse of newness, or, or whether that the body public be a horse whereon the governor doth ride, who newly in the seat that it may know he can command, let the straight feel the spur. Mm. So whether the tyranny be in his place or in his eminence, it fills it up, I stagger in. But this new governor wakes me all the enrolled penalties, which have like like unscoured armor hung by the walls so long that nineteen zodiacs have gone round and none of them been worn. And for a name, now puts the drowsy and neglected act freshly on me. It is surely for a name. I warrant it is. The head stand so tickle on my shoulders that a milkmaid, if she be in love, may sigh it off. Send after the duke and appeal to him. I have done so, but he's not to be found. I prithee, Lucio, do me this kind service. This day my sister should the cloister enter and there receive her approbation, acquaint her with the danger of my state, to implore her in my voice that she make friends to the strict deputy, to bid herself assay him. I have great hope in that, for in her youth there is a, a prone and speechless dialect such as movement. Besides, she hath prosperous art when she will play with reason and discourse, and well she can persuade. I pray she may, as well for the encouragement of thy life, which stands under such heavy imposition as the enjoyment of thy life, which I would hate to be such foolishly lost over a game of tic-tac. <laughs> I'll to her. I thank thee, good friend Lucio. Within two hours. Come, officer, away. No, holy father, throw away that thought. Believe not that the dribbling dart of love can pierce a complete bosom. Why I desire thee to give me secret harbor hath a purpose more grave and wrinkled than the aims and ends of burning youth. May your grace speak of it? My holy sir. None better knows than you how I have ever loved the life removed and held an idle price to haunt assemblies where youth and cost a witless bravery keeps. 
I have delivered to Angelo, a man of stricture and firm absence, my absolute power and place here in Vienna, who supposes me traveled to Poland, for so have I strewed it in the common ear, and so it is received. Now, pious sir, you will demand of me why I do this. Gladly, my lord. We have strong statutes and most biting laws, the needful curbs and bits to headstrong steeds, which for this fourteen years we have let slide, even like the o'ergrown lion in a cave that goes not out to prey. Now, as fondful fathers, having bound up the threatening twigs of birch only to stick it in their children's sight for terror, not for use. In time, the rod becomes more mocked than feared. So our decrees, dead to infliction, to themselves are dead. And liberty plucks justice in the nose. The baby beats the nurse, and quite a thwart goes all decorum. It rested in your grace to unloose this tied-up justice when you pleased. And it in you, more dreadful would have seen than in Lord Angelo. I do fear too dreadful. Sith t'was my fault to give the people scope, t'would be my tyranny to strike and gall them for what I bid them do. For we bid this be done when evil deeds have their permissive past and not the punishment. Therefore indeed, my father, I have on Angelo imposed the office, who may, in the ambush of my name, strike home. And yet my nature never in the fight to do in slander. To behold his sway, I will, as twere a brother of your order, visit both prince and people. Therefore I prithee, supply me with the habit, and instruct me how I may formally in person bear me like a true friar. More reasons for this action and her more leisure shall I render you. Only this one. Lord Angelo is precise, stands at a guard with envy, scarce confesses that his blood flows or that his appetite is more to bread than stone. Hence shall we see if power change purpose, what our seemers be.